Hey everyone, it's Christina from Christina of Light. Thank you for visiting with me here. When you watch my videos, you're always in a protective bubble of love and light. Watched over by all my guides and angels. I'm in much gratitude to them for this. This is my weekly Monday love reading. How's everybody doing? So, wasn't um, called to pull cards from... Well, this deck I usually use. Not all the time, but I was called to draw some from there. A card from the Kali, uh, Kali deck. And main cards are coming from this deck right here. So I'm getting this is about, I was getting a, that this was about true love. Um, and that never got elaborated on after that. But, um, you know, that could be anything. True love for yourself, for, you know, what you're doing for work. You know, it could be anything. So, let's see what comes out. So, um, this is definitely a love reading on all different levels. So, we've got God's love here, we've got universal love, we've got lineages, curses being broken, the love of our past on loved ones generationally. Our souls all working together in gratitude for this journey all together, bringing in balance in all aspects and allowing the change to occur and most importantly all of those ascended masters. For help guiding it all. And that's that's cosmically as well. Another balance card. Centered energy and self-care. There's there's the um, true love of oneself. Um, finding the, the correct balance in your life with the people, places, and things that haven't, um, you know, expelling the things that no longer serve you, which tend to naturally just fall away anyways. Um, in my experience, because my journey has always pretty much evolved that way. People a lot of times don't tend to spend a lot of time with me after a while because I, I not meant, there's only in certain occasions I personally am meant to be with people for a longer period of time. It's very specific, but a lot of times my experiences are to, to either teach people or learn lessons myself to help myself to elevate um, which is what we do as souls anyways naturally here but um, I, I was uh, on some accelerated program I had to learn a lot of stuff in a very short period of time even though I'm you know I'm in my early 50s uh, a lot of stuff had to be accumulated really quickly because um, when I spiritually awoke it was very quick and it I dove right into it head first without even knowing what was happening and um, so for uh, a lot of you folks right now you're part of a collective right now that is being guided you were part of a collective that was 
taught self-love, how to go through the experience of self-love and learning to love oneself um, to be brought to those higher levels. So now what has occurred is the family lineage healing, um, getting rid of uh, karmic people, places, and things, allowing that eternal healing in us, um, you know, from past lives and on, and getting to this point now where the heart has, has been healed to the point where it's fully opened, and now the universe can bring in your true love partner. So, um, love, acceptance, and romance. And I, it's funny because I see this car, this number, for the last two days, all I've been seeing is nines. <laughs> so, my receipt at the grocery store was almost all nines. Uh, nines on numbers going down the road. I just everything's been all nines all of a sudden the past, past couple days. Or I've seen other numbers beforehand. And, and ultimately, what's occurring right now is is all those seeds have been planted and they're starting um, to bloom all the little blooms that are occurring soul expression something new and we've gotten to the point now where everything we've created we've laid out the groundwork for so many things in our lives that it's time to bring the Sun in into our lives that um, not that we're not sunny anyways but it's helping us to illuminate even more and to shine even more and brand new growth um, happiness new love and that is what we're on the cusp of right now just those new beginnings that we've done all this you know arduous work for to get to this this point where we've been supported by our ancestors along in, in our lineage um, you know, the universe with all of its ma many helpers in it, all the guidance, um, and the ascended masters have all come together to help elevate the planet right now and help each of us individually but cohesively uh, experience what it is to have the ultimate love in our lives, starting with ourselves. So we can now start bringing in the ultimate loves of our life. <laughs> and, and it's going to bring much change. Uh, I mean, globally. This is this is going on globally right now. You, all you have to do is turn the news on to see. And half the time you don't know if that's real. But there's a lot going on right now. Travel and change of location. And you can see the hands of God in the universe right there, helping to support us, shining that light in the directions that we all need to be shown where we're headed, where our souls journey, where we contracted our souls um, to go. You know, we left all those little breadcrumbs all these days of our lives, and now we've gotten to the point now where it's really time to kick into high gear. It's master number two also there, 22. Um, kick in into high gear now to really, you know, this is where, you know, we, we've done all, a lot of that drudge work now. Now here's where we see the rewards. You know, Saturn always leaves a reward. So, I mean, just taking flight. Everyone's taking flight. We're getting ready to go. An emphasis on achievement, completion, reward, absolutely. All that hard work definitely deserves a reward. We all should be rewarded for all the great work we're doing on our soul's journeys. And that's where we start reaping those rewards from that hard work. See, that's the great gift here on this planet, that when you are doing what your soul's journey is, that starts to really pay off after a while. You know. Emphasis on all of 
our guidance, and that's including, along with our ancestors, passed over, ascended masters, all of the the characters who are helping us on multiple planes, it's also the animal spirits that are guiding us. I've talk, I talk about this quite a lot because I see them a lot. You know, the as above, so below words from above, masculine and feminine. And it's uh, the wise owl here and also the speed of leopard there there's no longer an emotional desert it's plentiful now being in touch with our our, our emotions um, supporting them allowing them you know uh, the problem with Humans is, is they like to stuff feelings instead of just feeling them, getting the hell out of the way of them, you know? Just let them flow. You know, within reason, of course, but, you know, you need to feel them to heal. Divine presence, the force of love and creation, and another master number 44. And ultimately, that's what the goal is. the essence of love, the divine maker, the I am love that's in all of us. That's ultimately the reward right there. Gaia. To be in receiving mode, it's ultimately advised to be in your, your feminine traits right now because that balance is still integrating. What it means to be in your feminine is, it is to allow it to occur. Just allow love to happen in your life. Allow, allow, allow. Be a magnet. Learn how to receive. <laughs> Surrender to that, please. <laughs> Grounding is necessary for vitality, balance of the feminine and the masculine. That ebb and flow, that even when you're apart, you're together. This is the balance of the feminine and masculine in you, in the receiving, because you've allowed healing, you, you've done the work, and you're ready for another level of love in your life. You're prepared for it. So just allow. No need to push. Allow the feminine traits in you that feminine energy to bring forth that captivating love, God love, universal love in your life. Krishna. There is a spiritual intelligence within your soul. It is the genius of becoming, of ripening from potential into glorious manifestation. Intimate communion with your own heart will reveal what it is you truly yearn for and set the process in motion for the yearning to be satisfied. The holy fire of Kali, and she is within your soul. Follow that yearning, seek the light. Let yourself burn bright for what inspires you, and you shall, you shall see the path to, for, uh, to fruition clearly before you. Believe in what you are meant to be. 
The name Krishnu translates as you are fire. Agni is the two-headed deity of fire and a potent symbol of supernatural power. On the physical level, fire generates light and heat to cook food, thereby representing both transformation and nourishment of the life force. The inner digestive fires that metabolize food and allow you to gain nutrients represent the inner nourishment of fire and symbolize the soul's need to digest our life experiences of spiritual growth. Fire can create purification for regeneration, such as that seen in a forest after it simultaneously burns away old growth and stimulates new seeds. In that sense, it is also the potential into fruition and fulfillment of innate purpose. On a spiritual level, fire attracts the soul, helping it find its way through darkness and towards warmth and light. The light enhancing and acmeal properties of fire transform physical materials as well as the subtle body of the soul. The appearance of Krishna in a reading indicates the tremendous potential for personal transformation and spiritual growth. You may feel like you are struggling, but your soul is actually gaining strength. What you desire may seem so far beyond your current reach, yet the, the oracle indicates your inner potential for tremendous accomplishment. The Hindu texts say that Agni exists not only as fire, but as lightning and the sun itself. Lightning is a symbol of sudden illumination and emerges unexpectedly, often in the midst of a tremendous psychological or emotional storm. In that sense, Agni is a power to see and with clarity. Such a powerful and searing insight can be intense enough to uproot a stubborn psychological pattern permanently. This is one reason why Kali is known for as the first of the seven tongues of Agni, the divine fire, the jolt of her uprising wisdom, the severity of severity, sorry, severity of her suddenly bestowed clarity can burn down the house we have built. We can no longer sustain a comfortable delusion. We must become honest with ourselves or change our approach to a situation based on the new information available. There is a temporary loss to gain greater freedom to grow on all levels. As the sun Agni represents the light that ends the darkness, yet Kali, the divine mother of dark grace, is the first of the tongues of the divine fire. This is the key to Kali's mysteries. It differentiates her from the concept of darkness as an evil or obstructive force against your spiritual awakening. Kali leads us into darkness to free us, not to impede our progress. She destroys in order to create, not to alienate. In that sense, her divine darkness is light. This is the mystery of Kali and why we can trust her so implicitly, understanding that sometimes it is only in moving through the darker times that we become aware of what is needed to live with more light. You have to go through the darkness of your journey to emerge on the other side of that. That is just basic. All of us have a journey to take, and no matter how shitty it gets, it's still what we contracted for ourselves to go through in this lifetime. How graceful you go through that is all up to you, though. As a tongue of fire, Kali Krishna comes all <clears throat> consumes all offerings. She is the divine capacity to receive our prayers, our pains, our craziness and our grateful heroism. She receives it all. She not only receives it, but as fire, she transforms the offering so it can nourish, heal, revitalize, and purify the soul. This is divine feminine alchemy. Kelly is the divine alchemist, and because she is tantric, a tantric go um, goddess, 
if we offer her even our most broken and messed up selves with a sense of reverence and humility, she will accept the offering and manifest grace from, from it. There's a deeper purpose to making an offering, the opening up a, of a channel between ourselves and the divine. The divine doesn't need to be conjoled into loving or wanting to help us. It is the human that needs to be, be dragged, uh, needs to help dragging the mind away from a fixation on what is wrong into the openness and presence that allows for divine grace to flow and for us to receive it. While the offering appears to be about what we are giving, it is enabling that capacity to receive. It may seem like offerings are tokenistic, but a true offering is hard to give. It is hard because it requires that we shift our presence, our state of mind and being. The more we do this, the greater the offering. It matters less what the form of our offering is, but more how it affects us internally. The Oracle of Krishna brings the message that whatever you need and desire, you can have. However, you must be prepared to enter into the sacred fire to make the appropriate offering. When we choose to make a supreme offering of ourselves to Kali, we are fully received and thus activate the flow of grace in our lives for the spiritual benefit of all. The, uh, the Oracle asks you to shift from focusing on what isn't working to immersion into the Divine Mother's heart. All can then be resolved and shall manifest according to her loving grace. Invocation Ritual When you are ready, say the following prayer. Kalima, Tongue of the Divine Fire, Agni, Lord of Light and Fire, please accept my humble offering as I surrender my attachments and offer my innermost being to the sacred fires of divine love and wisdom. I ask for cleansing, healing, protection, and fully actualized divine transformation. May every aspect of my being become what it is divinely intended to be. Through your grace and for the spiritual benefit of all beings, J. Ma Kali. Imagine, feel, intend, or visualize that there is a divine fire before you. The fire is sacred, cleansing, protective, and renewing. You can pass through the flames, and each time you do so, whatever you are willing to release to offer up is received. It is your choice as to what that shall be and how many times you pass through the flames. It is an intimate, active relationship between you and the divine. You may see Kali dancing in the flames and tend to let go to bring your focus into making an offering. It all happens in the heart. You don't need to overthink it. When you are ready, ground yourself in the present moment. You may notice that you are not that you are not as you were, even if you cannot clearly articulate why or how that is so. Place your hands in prayer and bow your head. You have completed your ritual. Here is the choice that is given to allow what you know no longer serves you to fall away, to allow that space, that white space, that light space, to fully bring in all that is going to serve you now. Um, and here, Callie allows, helps facilitate for... Um, that healing process because it's at that time that uh, when people are ready to release things that no longer serves them in their lives is when the best results occur and she is uh, acutely aware of that in the human being and uh, that's why she guides uh, divides us to uh, guides us to that divine light and allows for that divine space to allow for that divine love 
Um, so in gratitude, we thank her and we also thank Mary Magdalene for her beautiful deck as well in spirit. So that is your love reading for today. Um, so just be, allow what no longer serves you to fall away from you. You're ready and those things will fall away and they will allow all that new to flow into your life because you've expanded. Your heart's open and it's ready for true love. Because you truly love yourself enough and realize, you know what? I'm ready for true love in my life. That's what we're here for. Love, love, love. <laughs> That's something anybody can get on board with these days, I would think. Big, big heart. Anyways, that's my love reading for Monday. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. I hope you liked the reading. Um, more than likely, if it was for you, you'll like it. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow for my Cosmic Eye reading. Message reading. There we go again. Need message. Anyway, peace and love, everyone. Peace and love. Peace and love.